Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist here on YouTube and welcome to the first in my series of three videos on Daniel Smith watercolors and I'll be using the dot sample charts in this video. But first my disclaimer which is that I invested in the paints on the left hand side and fell in love with Daniel Smith watercolors and they provided to me the ones on the right hand side. So the opinions here are my own but I'm really really grateful to them for sharing some paints with me so I can continue my research and study and share more information with you. These are the dot charts and these are a genius idea I have to say. They have all the information about each of the colors but they also have swatches of the color. These are actual paints so you can touch a brush to them. You can see where my brush wet the paper and picked up paper and you can make your own swatch charts and it helps you to be able to select what kinds of paints you might want to purchase. This has 238 in this set. There's other sets as well, but the 238 was what I have. And what, I did something silly. I took this um, die set and I cut out 238 of this little hexagon. I was going to make this beautiful hexagon chart for myself and that didn't end up necessary, but I'll show you what I did anyway. So I made photocopies of the dot chart. So I had these copies on white cardstock, they're on heavy cardstock, and I painted each one of those little hexagons. There's actually four pages in it, so this is the other page, and I adhered them on with a little bit of adhesive so that I could remove them and put them back on, but literally all I did was paint each one. You just touch your wet brush to the surface of the paint and paint your swatch. In the back of each one of mine, I have the paint name written, so I can take them all off, make a selection of colors, come up with a group of colors that I think will work nice together, and then put them back on my chart. And it kind of keeps them all apples to apples when I'm going to be using the dot charts to paint. So I liked the idea of keeping them intact instead of having a crazy rearranged hex chart. But then I figured out, well, here's an easier way if you're interested in doing it the easy way. I took seven inch by half inch strips of watercolor paper, and I suggest that you do this on whatever watercolor paper you normally will paint on, so you get the right color, and just paint on those. I glued them onto the same pieces of paper, and I'm like, that would have been a lot easier to do, except for my system with the hexagons, I can pull those off, move them around, do stuff with them, and then put them back. So it depends on how you're gonna use them. The dot charts are printed with a bunch of information about the paints, as well as this brochure has lots of information. The brochure has even more information, and I hope you get one of these brochures with your order. I'm crossing my fingers that happens for you. But there are a series of numbers there. There's a list in the brochure of what size tube it comes in, whether it comes in a stick. But both the brochure and the color chart have this list that is a key so you know what all those numbers mean. Now the, the color information, there's light fastness. That's how long it holds up or how well it holds up to being in the light. Fugitive means that it will start to fade rapidly in the light. There's reasons for that. I'll probably do a video on that at some point explaining more about that. But most of the colors are very light fast. There's staining versus non-staining. Non-staining means you can lift the color and get back to nearly a white piece of paper if you apply water to it and lift color out of it. Granulation is the texture, and there's varying degrees of granulation for a lot of the colors. And transparency. Some are semi-transparent or semi-opaque, and you can get all that information about each one of the colors. There's also a Primatex series, and there's another video in this intro series that'll show you more about the Primatex, but there are icons both on the brochure and on the dot chart showing you. Once you do your swatching, it's time to pick your favorites. And I definitely re recommend doing the swatching first so you don't use up all your color before you get swatches tried out. And I've decided I wanted to do some real world testing. If you're a fine artist, then do some fine art, just some little mini paintings and try the colors out and see how they feel. For me, just looking at a swatch chart doesn't always tell me I love this color, I'm going to use this a lot. But if I use it in context, it 
tends to tell me more. So I've stamped out a card because I make greeting cards as well as do fine art. And I've used a stamp set from my favorite things stamp company and stamped a bunch of images and then drew in the boxes based on the comic strip template that is free in my store. If you'd like to go and download that, you can. But this gave me a lot of very small areas that I could use all of the pinks, the purples, and the reds. And I just wanted to test them, see how they feel. To me, just, just I don't know, painting in an actual real world situation tells me a lot about what I like. Some of them I got some granulation and I went, ooh, I really like that granulation in that color a lot. I like how the, the colors break up. Or, you know, that, that pink is not one that I see myself using on a regular basis. I think there's this other pink might work better. Keep a piece of paper handy and write down notes on each of these colors. And did you like them? Did you not like them? And what you think you might use them for. Because it's going to help you to prioritize what you might decide to purchase and add to your collection. Because you can use these Daniel Smith watercolors in combination with watercolors you already have. So you may find you only need to add a few to your collection. But if you haven't watercolored at all and you just want to get started, watch the other videos in this series because there's a set of six that's a great starter set and mixes to make a ton of colors. And I'll show you how that works in one of the other videos. One of the other cool things that you can do with these dot charts, once you're finished with your swatching and you're, uh, you're all set, you could use these as a travel watercolor set. If there are colors that you've purchased, you can reduce the dots by just adding a dot and letting it dry to make, make it usable again. So you can take this on the road with you and do your paintings from that. It's a great way to take your Daniel Smith on the road. So I'm just finishing up the painting on this. I'm trying to do little washes, not really big ones, because there's not enough color in these dots to do big washes. But I'm trying to do just little ones to get the feel for these different colors, um, looking at, at the paints themselves, and uh, trying to look at the swatches and see what I can learn about each one and which ones do I actually want to purchase. And which ones will I survive with just having a few dots to play with? So here are a few more videos. The two on the left are the others in this intro series for the Daniel Smith watercolors. And on the right hand side is one that will be live soon with uh, more on Daniel Smith watercolors and using one of the charts to do a little painting. You can hit the subscribe button if you're not yet subscribed to get more videos from me. Thank you so much for taking some time to watch this and all the links to all the supplies and everything are in the description down below. Take care.